uh, let me come to you, uh, Fuzz, in terms of evolution. If the universe had a start, and we know it's 13.7 billion years ago, that causes a problem for evolution, doesn't it? Yeah, actually twofold. First is there's just simply not enough time for life to emerge through random means uh, if the universe is 13.7 billion years in age. But also what's intriguing as well is that, as Hugh mentioned, everything in the universe points towards life. Everything points towards design. And that is inconsistent with a model for life in which it's random processes and a haphazard nature to the universe, if you will, that's responsible for generating life. Okay, here's a whole bunch of textbooks that are currently used in the United States right now in our high schools and uh, just got them stacked up. I've actually been reading them. And one of the quotes that's just hot off the press from the National Science Teachers Association uh, says this, scientific disciplines with a historical component such as astronomy, your ball game, geology, biology, your ball game, and anthropology cannot be taught with integrity if evolution is not emphasized. But the first thing of the Big Bang says that it's got a problem with evolution, there's not enough time. What do you make of this statement? Why, are the, why is the Teachers Association making that kind of a statement? Well, I think there's a deep philosophical bias towards naturalism or materialism which is this view that only nature exists, only nature comprises reality. Uh, and that philosophy, I think, forces those types of statements. But if there is a creator who's responsible for the universe, for life, and for life's history, we should see that divine fingerprint as we study these historical sciences. And in fact, this is what we're seeing. We're not seeing evidence for evolution. We're seeing evidence for the divine fingerprint everywhere we look in every scientific discipline. 